Hey, what's up? It's Rad Flick Inc. Um, today's video is going to be a little bit different. I don't have any DVDs that I bought, so this won't be an update. Today's video is basically just going to be... I'm going to talk about a movie that I just saw a couple hours ago in theaters. And then, um, just to make it a little bit longer and make the video worth watching, I'm going to go ahead and do something I've never done before, which is like give a tour a little bit of my room, like my collection of um, movies and memorabilia stuff that I have. Because I've never done that before. Uh, so yeah, first thing I want to talk about is I just got back from the movie theater and I saw the movie Sinister that just came out. I don't know who's seen this and who hasn't. And um, I'm sure like, you know, most of you uh, might still want to see the movie, maybe because the trailer made it look kind of good. So I'm going to try not to kill it, even though I am pretty angry and I would like to kill this movie because I didn't like it at all. Uh, that it was a complete waste of time, um, like most horror films these days. So yeah, I just got it from Sinister. And I actually did want to like this movie because I thought the character, the main guy in the movie, the evil guy, Bagul, looked kind of cool. Uh, he was like a mixture of The Crow and like Marilyn Manson. And I thought the movie was going to be alright, and I actually liked Ethan Hawke. Um, but I think the trailer was kind of misleading. They didn't really deal with Bagul very much in the movie. Um, and it was just another one of the movies, again, where I, I feel like I keep seeing these movies. I, I, I go see a bunch of horror movies. And it's like the last five or six in a row that I've seen have all been the same thing. Like people move into a new house and then weird stuff starts happening or there's like a weird history. Oh, let's investigate this history. And then it's, but it's never scary though. It's just the same thing and it's never scary. It's just getting old. The fact that it's the same plot, just different people and it's never scary. And I was a little bit excited about this film because it had an R rating and you know, all the other films I saw had PG-13 ratings, and I saw this movie, and I really don't, I don't understand how it got an R rating. It doesn't really make sense to me, because it was nothing in there that really made me think, like, oh, it should be an R rating, except for, like, maybe one scene, uh, where they're cutting somebody's throat or whatever, but they don't even really show that. You see that uh, through a reflection of Ethan Hawke's glasses, you don't even fully see it, so it was just bullcrap. And I'm thinking about all these movies I've seen recently that are the same, and uh, Silent House, a new house, they're gonna go into the new house and investigate what's going on. Woman in Black, guy moves into a new house, investigate what's going on. Um, what was the other one I saw? The Possession, they move into a new house. Oh, let's see what's going on. And there was another one that I saw. I forgot what it was. That was the same thing. Like, move, people move into a new house and then there's like a dark history and like, oh, let's investigate. And these movies are just, it just it's so bad. And um, too much paranormal horror these days. I know that's like the hot thing to jump onto. And uh, it's the hot genre right now with the paranormal, uh, the success of the Paranormal Activity franchise, which I'm not really into that at all either. But it's just another one of those movies. So if I could do anybody a uh, shred of good, if you see this review and you were thinking about seeing Sinister, without killing it, I'll tell you, it's one of those movies where they go into a new house and then they start investigating because there's like some weird thing going on in the house and then they figure it out and blah, blah, blah. And it's just the same bull crap and I'm just sick of it. And uh, I was really disappointed in this movie. Uh, without giving away too much, Ethan Hawke doesn't do too bad of a job, but the movie just seems kind of repetitive. You know, he finds this box in the attic when they first move in the house. Hey, sorry about that. Uh, the batteries in my camera died. That's been happening too often, so I'm sorry about that. But um, like I was saying, just a quick uh, idea of what the plot is. Ethan Hawke moves his family into a new house, and he's like, um, he's a writer. But um, he doesn't do like fiction, he focuses on like real life crimes. And uh, so he moves into the house that happens to be the house where these, this murder has happened, where four people got hung in the backyard, a family. They move in, he goes into the attic uh, to put stuff up there to storage, and he finds a box. It's a bunch of like old Super 8 uh, reels of footage. He throws on this old projector, starts watching them, and starts seeing all these murders. And then he notices there's always this dude in the background. That's the demon Bagul, and then he tries to investigate and he gets all wrapped up in it. It was just stupid. I didn't like it at all. It was a waste of time. And um, so, yeah, if you were thinking about going and seeing Sinister, you could go see it. But hopefully, my little review right here will tell, warn some people uh, not to see it. Uh, if that's what you're not looking forward to. If, if you were seeing Silent House and was disappointed by it, House and, uh, I mean, Woman in Black and were disappointed by it, uh, The Possession were disappointed by it. This movie's like that. It's pretty much the same thing. And don't let the rated R rating fool you. It's, it's a piece of crap. 
So anyway, uh, like I said, to make this review go a little um, longer and also to do something I haven't done before, I'm going to go ahead and show you like a quick um, layout of my collection that I have in my room, including my DVDs, and I got some posters and stuff like that. So I'm going to go ahead and start with my uh, DVDs. Uh, I'm not going to stop and show like one by one. Maybe I'll do a different video of that. Um, I have a lot of horror, mainly horror, but... Um, I have other stuff like action, comedy, and drama, but anyway, they're in alphabetical order just in case if you haven't noticed. So I'll just go down, and um, so this is the first row of my horror right here in alphabetical order. It gets kind of dark in the corners, but anyway, like I said, I wasn't trying to point out anything. I got some box sets up there. Those are just the Goonies and the show that I watched called So It's Set in Philadelphia. Uh, then I got another row down here of horror, and it goes all the way down. And then I got a third row of horror. And this one goes about to the middle, and then it stops, and then it's like, you know, some of my favorite directors, Tarantino and Robert Rodriguez, those movies. And then it goes further down, and it gets into, like, drama, I think. And then at the bottom here, I got some uh, more drama. Then it goes into comedy. Then it goes into, like, action, which I don't actually have very much of, and then TV at the very end. This is, like, a wide angle of what it looks like in my collection. It's just on this bookshelf right here. It's actually a pretty modest uh, collection as far as I've seen lately, a lot of these horror fans have such a huge collection. It makes mine look so small. And it's funny because people coming over to my house uh, tell me, damn, you have a lot of movies. But now when I see these people on the internet, you know, and I, I know other fans of, of horror movies, they collect a lot. And I, I, I tell them, actually, I don't, you know. And the thing is, I would have more. If I was still collecting at the rate that I first was collecting at, then this would be tripled. And mainly horror movie tripled. But um, I slowed down. And also, now that I'm not working, I've really slowed down. So, um, yeah, I don't have as much DVDs as I would like to. But that's my little modest collection right there. Anyway, then I have a few posters. Right above the uh, the setup, I have this Pulp Fiction poster. It's black and white, you know. Um, Pulp Fiction is probably going to be probably my favorite non-horror movie, drama, action movie. Awesome cast, awesome script. I love Quentin Tarantino. And this is just like the iconic scene of uh, John Travolta and Samuel Jackson um, shooting that guy in the chair then it goes over here let me try to get up on this I got the uh, Halloween poster the night he came home that's the original from the 79 then I got this little thing it's it's kinda wrinkled so it's gonna be kind of uh, smudged when I shoot it right now but let me try to get up on here it's got some autographs I don't know how thin this, this is I didn't really get it cuz I thought it was authentic but I liked the um, the um the art on it I just liked it a lot and um I'll show you after where I got that in but yeah it's Friday the 13th and I got Last House on the left the original which I love that film uh, I got Creep Show I got Creep Show two huge fan of Creep Show not a huge fan of Part three though as I'm sure most of us aren't then it goes down I got Phantasm in the corner right here and just so you know these are all in glass frames they're actually real glass I got them from Walmart for a pretty cheap price but uh. They're really good frames. I, I like them a lot, and I spend a lot of time trying to evenly space them apart because I'm not big into having posters just laying on the wall flat with like thumbtacks or whatever you want to use tape. Framing them, I think, is the best way. They come out looking really good. And then I turn the corner and I got Day of the Dead, the original George A. Romero. Love that film. Uh, then I got Return of the Living Dead Part 2. Nope, I didn't forget about Part 1. I actually prefer Part 2 to Part 1. I don't know what it is about that film, Return of the Living Dead Part 2, but I just absolutely love it. It's one of my top five favorite zombie films and definitely one of my top horror comedies from the 80s. Uh, I do have the original. I like the original a lot. I just prefer the sequel for whatever reason. Then we go down here and in this corner, I just dropped something. In this corner, I got the Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Weird cover art, but the only thing is, is I couldn't really find um, one that was uh, vertical rather than horizontal of like the original one, you know, like with the planet in the background, the big clown face. I couldn't find that one. And this one's not that bad, and I figured most people would have that other one that I was talking about and wouldn't have this one, so I got it, and I love Killer Clowns. It's another one of my favorite uh, 80s horror comedies. Uh, then I got Scream here. Maybe a lot of people will probably be like, why does he have a poster of Scream? But I love that. I think it's a really good slasher, and it's really innovative. Then down here, I got the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. This is the poster for the Texas Chainsaw Massacre at the beginning. Um, I'm not really trying to promote that movie. I do like it. I just got it because I'm a huge fan. Well, I'm a pretty big fan of the franchise, but I don't actually like the original. And if you know my videos, I've talked about that before. 
I don't really like the original too much. I just got this because all the other ones were, again, I was having trouble finding vertical ones. And these are all small. These are all, the little ones I'm showing, with the exception of the Pulp Fiction, these are all 11 by 17 And I could not find a good 11 by 17 one of this. So I decided to get this one. But it's not me showing that I only like Texas Chainsaw Massacre at the beginning. It's just that I thought that was a really cool uh, art on it, too. And then I got 30 Days a Night in the Corner. Uh, well, that's my favorite vampire movie, hands down, ever. Horror or any kind of vampire film. Then I'm going to go up here, and I got The Thing, which is a weird kind of choice uh, poster that I chose, but that one was really hard to find. I couldn't find one that I liked. And um, I'm going to back up and show you why. That one has to be horizontal. I can't have that one vertical because there's not enough space. So I had to get that one rather than getting the one that I actually wanted, which would be the usual one. Then I'm going to go over here. And up in this corner, I have Night of the Demons. Uh, love that movie. Good 80s movie. Uh, they did a remake, which I didn't really like at all. I got it, but maybe good for one view. But other than that, the original is way better. I have Tales from the Crypt Demon Knight. And um, I don't really know why, but I just I like that film a lot. And it's really cheesy. And I don't think it's really worthy of a poster. Especially not a framed poster. But um, I saw it really cheap online one day, so I decided to get it. And I didn't hang it up for a while, but then I had a frame hanging around that uh, needed a poster to be put in. So I put it up, just for the time being. Um, but if uh, once I start buying posters more again, that one's definitely going to come down. I love that movie a lot, but um, I'd rather put something else in there. Then um, there's uh, Sin City right here. Robert Rodriguez is my favorite all-time director, well, filmmaker. I love the guy. He's so hands-on. He does everything he does in his films. He edits. He writes. He does the... Um, he works the camera, even the steady cam. He even composes the music. That guy's a genius. I love him to death. And Sin City, even though he didn't write it, it's literally like word for word the comics. Uh, he did a really good job at uh, bringing the Sin City characters to life. Uh, Kill Bill, of course, everybody knows Kill Bill. And I thought this was a really good poster instead of like the, you know, the usual um, movie art cover for the movie. I decided to get this one. I thought it was really cool. Then down here I got uh, Predators. The Robert Rodriguez remake. I'm a fan of the Predator franchise, except for the the versus uh, Alien ones. The versus Alien first one was okay, but the Requiem was that was pretty stupid. But I just like that art. It's just so cool. With the black background, so simple but so good. Then I got Machete, which is a big problem. That's another one that's gonna have to come down because even though I'm like a humongous Robert Rodriguez fan, I thought Machete came out kind of crappy, and I'm not a big fan of it at all. I only got it because I love Danny Trejo, and um, I think the image is really cool on the poster. But that's gonna come down soon. Then if I back up and go over here, I got um my we gotta get I gotta get back. This is my um, double feature grindhouse poster of Planetary and Death Proof. Planetary, like I said before, is my favorite uh, horror movie or favorite movie of all time. It just has everything that I love: the director, the genre, the zombies, the effects, the cast is awesome. I just love it, and it's like it's got that old school vibe to it. It's kind of you know beat up and worn down on purpose. It's got lines going through on the poster. I don't know if you can really see that, but they're going through the whole old school thing. Then I got my big... These 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 two are giant, by the way. I got to move something real quick so I can show you this. Um, then I got my big one right next to it, a Friday 13th. Um, this is not from a movie. This is just poster art or movie art, whatever you want to call it. But I like that one. I think it's really cool with the lake in there and then the whole forest and his face coming over the lake. It's just really cool. I love it. I got that one. I got most of these off of line. Then I come up here. And I got Reservoir Dogs. Like I said, huge Tarantino fan, so I had to get that one. And I love this one. This is one of my favorite ones that I have. I love the black and white with the red lettering and the, the iconic scene of all them walking out of the restaurant at the beginning of the movie. Even though the weird thing is they left out Tarantino. They didn't even put him in this. I don't see him anywhere. He's supposed to be in that scene. But anyway, the next to that is uh, Robert Rodriguez's first movie, El Mariachi. Awesome movie. I love that. That's like the the one before Desperado. No, Everybody remembers Desperado. Nobody really ever talks about Maniachi, but it's a really awesome film and it's an inspiring film to watch if you're trying to be a, a filmmaker, it's awesome. Then next to that, try to keep it in frame, I'm sorry, I got uh, Sam Raimi's Army of Darkness. Pretty good film, not a huge fan as most people might be, but I like it a lot, I like it enough to put it in the poster. That might be one that comes out one day if I get something better, but for now it's going to stay. Next to it I got uh, this, just the show that I love, it's my favorite show, it's always sunny in Philadelphia. So I decided to put that up there. Then in the corner, even though I'm not too much into action films, 
I got um, a couple action films here. I hope this is not too hard to see. I got um, I like John Woo a lot. I like uh, his his uh, directing style, like really fast paced, lots of action. Shootouts are great. He really knows how to direct a shootout. Um, John Woo's Hard Boiled and also The Killer. Both these movies have uh, Chow Young Fat or Young Fat Chow, whatever you want to call him. Then down here I got The Goonies, my favorite childhood film. And then I have Trick or Treat, the recent... Hey, sorry about that, man. Now I actually, my uh, memory was full. I'm so embarrassed about how many times I've had to cut this video. I'm going to have to edit this together. I hope you guys don't get too mad or lose interest and not watch this. Um, but anyway, this is the last little thing I'm going to show before I wrap the video up. I just didn't want to end it with just a, the screen going black and all of a sudden people might think I'm trying to pull a trick on you and do it with my own horror film. But anyway, uh, yeah, I'm such a huge fan that I actually even have Robert Rodriguez's book, which is uh, Rebel Without a Crew. This is about, you know, how he made it, basically, you know, doing low-budget films. And uh, he goes to California to try to sell El Mariachi to, uh, like, straight-to-video uh, Spanish market. And uh, they kind of give him the runaround. He's there so long, he decides, you know what, what the hell, bring it to, like, the big name people like Paramount Columbia. And they actually bite on it. So it's, like, his whole story. Then I got right here, I got Quentin Tarantino, the man in his movies. And it pretty much just chronicalizes uh, his life as a child, and it ends all the way up, uh, up to four rooms. It ends on four rooms. So there's nothing about Pulp Fiction in this movie, because uh, no, no, actually, I'm sorry. Yes, there is. There's nothing about From Dust Till Dawn, which I thought would have been cool. It ends at four rooms, but it's a really good book, also. And then, like I said, I'm a huge fan of the Grindhouse Pictures, uh, the movies. So I got this book, and it's called The Sleepfield Saga of an Exploitation Double Feature at Grindhouse. And it's just like, if you love the movies, or you love these, both these movies, or even one, it's got about 300 pages, and it's got like a bunch of, you know, pictures and posters that you wouldn't be able to see anywhere else. Lots of interviews, a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff, and it has the complete uh, Planetary screenplay. It says it had both the Planetary and the uh, Death Proof, but it doesn't. It only has the Planetary screenplay, but it's still really good. And then this is the thing I was going to show you earlier. This is the box that, that this poster up here came in. And I found it on eBay, and I decided it looked kind of cool, and it was supposed to be supposedly rare. Uh, it says right here, uh, 227 out of 500. So there's only 500 of these in the world, supposedly. And this is, it says like a 30th anniversary edition, 1980 to 2010. I didn't get this in 010 though, I got this in like 2011. But uh, yeah, inside of it is like a box and it came with uh, this poster. It came with the shirt that I've worn in the other videos before, which just looks exactly like the poster, it's just on a shirt. And then it came with some other stuff and it came with some coupons for like other things that are just pretty much, I got it too late that they're actually uh, expired, so there's no point in getting that. But yeah, anyway, so that's, that's, that's just what I wanted to show real quick, is um, do a little review about the movie I just watched, show my little modest movie collection, and then show my little nerd museum of all my horror film posters and stuff. So uh, I hope you guys liked the video. Feel free to leave me comments. And I'm going to try to buy some more DVDs, even though it's really hard for me these days. And I'll try to come back with some more updates, so keep watching. Alright, later.